Welcome to Midwest Sports Net. I'm Joey McWilliams. It's a privilege today to be joined on the summit by Glenn Caston, who is the head cheer coach at Xavier, the Xavier Gold, winning the national championship in the NIIA cheer competition for 2021 2022. Coach, thank you for being with me today. I appreciate that. And listen, national championship in the books. Let's just start right there. What does that mean? Talk about winning the NAIA national championship. I think it's just such a surreal feeling right now. Um, still, um, when we won, I was just like, oh my God, we just did this. We, 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 we actually won a championship. It's the first in our school's history for any sport to obtain an NAIA national um, title. Um, and so I didn't know what that meant um, in terms of celebratory and celebration. We're here in New Orleans, so everything's a celebration. So I knew it was to come. Um, but I think really what it means for us is um, a deep scope of what we've built over this short period of time um, at Xavier and under Xavier Athletics, you know. So um, we have always had quality athletics, um, but more importantly, our institution was founded, right, um, to provide um, to provide um, this access to um, black and brown students um, to receive a high quality education. And so with that being said, um, I think it's a culmination of two. We're coming up on our centennial right now. Um, and so that's really super exciting. Um, and so um, to see sort of these these big picture things from our founder, um, um, Catherine Drexel, come to life about what she envisioned um, institutions like Xavier should represent across our country is so exciting for us. Coach, that's fantastic, and that, that's really nice to get to hear. Well, I, I want to talk about the championship first itself because I've been to a number of these uh, NAI regional and national competitions, and you have the preliminary round, then you have the final round, and you all were second uh, in the scoring in the preliminary round, and that's you know trying to, to work your way up. It's not impossible, but certainly not easy to do, especially when you're trailing a former national champion as well in St. Ambrose. So you all were in the preliminary round, second in scoring, then you come back in the finals and set a meet record, 93.7 the score in the finals. Coach, first off, that's amazing. But talk about the rally and, and what that was like and, uh, you know, the, the, the athletes themselves. Right. So, you know, part of coaching and I think our coaching model here is certainly built on uh, under, having our athletes understand that this, this is a bigger cause. Right. So one thing about Xavier Cheer that people don't know is that um, our student athletes are deeply rooted in their communities. Um, and so this year uh, we launched our I See Me campaign. So mm -hmm. if you can see behind me, we, um, we launched our first line of African-American dolls with different skin tones and textures. Um, and so this year, our theme, which we've always had themes since I've been here, um, has been exuding Black excellence, but also really tapping back into our young people um, so that they can now see what a champion looks like, a champion spirit, having a champion, like honoring the champions of character that the NAIA has um, instituted across the uh, across across our network. Um, and so we had a really tough conversation after day one um, because, <laughs> you know, just coaching talk. And so I can talk, I can talk like I feel. Um, so we had a really deep conversation, right? Um, and this conversation was about, um, because we had mistakes that we had never seen before. Mm -hmm. I mean, we train hard. We train, I would say we train harder than a football team. In fact, our team trains at our Saints facilities. Um, so <laughs> down here. So they're training where the Saints um, actually train. So we take it seriously. You, know, I mean, they're lifting weights. They're running um, four times a week, you know, so they train hard. Um, but what does it really, training it, training without, um, without empathy and without some type of character development is just training. And so I asked the team after day one, I said uh, to them, I said, what shall they say about what you put out there today? And a lot of them were like, what are you talking about, coach? I'm like, what shall those little black and brown boys and girls say who look up to you every single day, who, who they're running into our gym as we're practicing just to sit and give you a hug, you know? Um, we're nestled right in our Girtown community and we've done a lot of work um, to help improve the quality of life in the Girtown community in New Orleans. Um, from volunteering at our on-campus garden to disseminating more than um, 
200 pounds of produce in the spring. That's a part of our that's that's a part of our program model. And so our 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 student athletes, they are always in the community. They're seeing their their community face to face. And so we have as we have a responsibility um, as coaches, as athletes, as an institution um, to go out and say say to say the good news. Um, and I always tell the team that there should be never, ever any regret when you have done your very best. Even if you don't come um, come in first place, if you've done your very best, then we can walk away and say, you know, the work was worth it. It was it, we, we've done the work that we've been called to do. But if when you leave off that mat and you have not you can't say deep down in your spirit that you've done your very best work. Um, then, then there's another conversation. And so after day one, we didn't do our very best work. We dropped um, we dropped a stunt that we have never dropped before uh, at a competition, you know. Uh, and this is some of the most seasoned and veteran um, people on my team who dropped this stunt. And what I asked them, I said, what happened? Like, what, what's, what happened? Because some little boy, some little girl is not disappointed, but they're confused right now, right? Because they expect more from you um, than maybe you expect of yourselves. Um, and and we had that rough conversation. Um, we were going to go out to eat that night. Um, and um, I canceled the dinner plan. So we ate into the hotel because we had to refocus, right? We um, Some of what I felt um, in the moments were that um, we had lost some kind of focus, right? There, there was a pendulum um, shift because we had been focused all season long. I mean, we went undefeated. We ranked number one in the preseason polls. Um, you know, this is our second year ranking number one in those polls. Something, something was not clicking, right? Um, and so then, finally, um, Joey, I'll tell you this. Um, I noticed on the score sheet um, that – uh, we we had not maximized our jump scores from day one. Um, and I was like, wait a minute, like, what happened? <laughs> um, and so we were like point, I think it was like, we ended up getting like a 4.9 in difficulty um, with jumps, which that never, ever happens either, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and out of the five points. Um, and so I was like, wait, what happened? And so I go back to the tape. Um, you know, I'm old school to take the recording. And um, <laughs> I'm noticing that one of our girls, she had an injury two weeks before um, before nationals. Um, it wasn't a severe injury, but we had taken her out of the jump section, which then brought down our quantity score in mm-hmm. jump by, by point 0.1. And if you know anything about cheerleading, point 0.1 matters. That, that's, a, that's a huge, yeah. that's a huge piece. Um, and so, we added in that extra person to get that point one. We refocused and remobilized on that stunt. Um, and they had to tap into who they are, right? And what their purpose and why they do this. Uh, we asked, um, um, and I'm long-winded, so please stop me, but um, we asked a very serious question um, before coming into Xavier Cheer, before, like before you even step foot out of practice, before you even um, step foot on our campus, is why do you do this? Um, and I don't care if you like cheerleading because a lot of people like cheerleading, right? Um, you have to have something deeper um, to, to to move us, right? Uh, mm-hmm. And to move yourself so that those days where you don't feel like getting out of bed for the 5 a.m. workouts, those days that um, your travel schedule is extremely intense and you have to do your study halls because we're producing the next black doctors, black lawyers. Um, we're the number one um, HBCU in the country to produce the black doctors, right? And actually we produce more black doctors than any other institution um, in the country. So when you, those days where you have to go to those clinicals, those days that you're going to um, pharmacy school and doing our accelerated six year D program, um, and you're in clinicals and you're there from eight to eight and didn't have to come to my practice at eight 30. <laughs> that why, that reason why you get up every day, that reason why this is so important to you will be what keeps you moving forward. Right. And it's hey, important at the forefront. Sorry. I didn't, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I, I know I, 
I listen, I know you have to, and you have to, to, to make those adjustments. And obviously you did. And, and I agree with you point one. I mean, it may not seem like that much, but you, you're starting to get those scores down into not only tenths, but hundreds of points, mm -hmm. uh, when, when it all gets added together in that, well, obviously it was enough to make that turnaround. You alluded to the fact that this was the first team championship in Xavier history. And, you know, you said, I'm not sure exactly how you celebrate <laughs> something like that, but, but obviously it, it is a big deal and, and it's a, a great, a great moment for mm -hmm. the university itself. And you've had a little bit of time now to think about that. So where are you now? Um, you know, I think one of the things that I think is super important in terms of the celebra celebration side of things is just acknowledging, right? Acknowledging where we've come from. Um, and how short, right, this program was built. Like, again, this program was only built over the last three years, the competitive right. side of it. Um, and so that pivot to become um, competitive has been super, super, super important. Um, and what I've thought about um, now as we celebrate, right, the celebration isn't just for the team. It's not just for athletics. It's for our institution because mm -hmm. our institution, honestly, they have bought into competitive cheer um, in ways that when I look across the NAIA, that's not a standard, right? Um, we're still working to get administrators on board to value, right, why this is so important. Um, when you come, if you, if you would take a trip um, to One Drexel Drive, to Xavier University of Louisiana, um, one of the things that you would see and feel um, as the cheerleaders walk this campus was a community-based feeling. Our SGA rallies behind us, um, when we hosted our in-person competition, the Battle in the Big Easy, we had over 800 of our school population folks to come um, to just to the competition. Mm -hmm. um, I think we had a total of about 1,300 spectators throughout that weekend um, of our competition, which is awesome. Um, people are struggling to get 100 people in the door, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you would uh, go into our academic affairs side, our provost um, and our president, um, our vice presidents, they're all competitive cheer fans. You know, um, I joke with uh, Dr. Barrett, our president, who uh, he's uh, um, he's unfortunately he's walking on a crutch. He had um, um, uh, an MRI on his knee. And yesterday we were in a cab. And I said, what happened? He said, a cheer accident. <laughs> I said, uh, well, I said, President Perret, I don't need you to be out there uh, doing a back camp spring. <laughs> like, leave that, to, leave that to the cheer program. Yeah. He just laughed and chuckled. But he's very supportive. And, and especially our Vice President of Student Affairs, Curtis Wright. Curtis Wright, um, Vice VP Wright, he's invested so much in our program. He's never missed a competition. I mean, he was um, at uh, regionals on his board meeting <laughs> at the competition. <laughs> he's like, uh, can I just go and be, just be on the bus, coach, while I take this call? What time are we going on? And I gave him the schedule. And he, he told the board, hey, I got to stop this board meeting for this two minutes and 30 seconds routine. Um, yeah. And the kids know that he's not going to miss, right? They know that he's going to be there and they're going to be like, and if they don't see him, they know he's in the building. So then they'll ask me, where is VP Wright sitting? You know, and so that investment is there. Our athletic director, our athletic director, A.D. Cochran, has supported this team so, so much. I mean, it's been, he, we were going to OKC for a competition uh, this year um, and we got snowed out, right? So we, we were at the airport and they're like, your plane is not taking off. And I'm like, oh geez, this is going to be bad. So I called, I didn't even know this right at the time. So I called A.D. Cochran. I'm like, A.D. Cochran, like, I'm so distraught. I don't know what to do. Do I wait at the airport? They say I can fly out tomorrow. Do I call? Like, what do I do? I need your, I need, I really need some expert advice about this. Um, and we, uh, it was a big competition because we were going to OKC to compete against Oklahoma City, but then we're also traveling to Bethel um, three hours away mm -hmm. so that then we can do their mass competition, which featured like 16 teams. And um, he said, Glenn, I can't talk to you right now. I said, oh, geez, like, I don't know. He's like, I'm already um, in Oklahoma and I'm checking out and scoping it out for us. Um, and I'm trying to make that assessment. He said, give me about an hour. He had flown with his wife 
um, who's also supportive of us to make sure that our hotels were taken care of so that when we got in, it was a smooth transition. Yeah. He, 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 you, that level of support is not given, right? Um, across, as I can see it, across other institutions, even D1 institutions. And so our institution has invested so much. And so when I think about the celebration side of this, it's a celebration for everyone yeah. because everyone has invested. Every single, uh, all of our students, we are we have a very good positive relationship with all of our student bodies, um, um, organizations, a very good uh, relationship with um, our housing folks, our uh, Office of Inclusion and Social Justice, of course, because that's our office, um, student affairs. So um, we, that helps to create, right, this, this ideal space, right, that makes us so successful because what this team knows is that everyone's rallying for them. Mm -hmm. I mean, for custodial staff, like the custodial staff, they they purchase our dolls, they purchase our shirts, you know, they, they're coming to the competition. The calf is like feeding them, like they're like, wait, the cheerleaders need a healthy option. So they're preparing special things, right, for them to have a... Um, have a special option um, so that they can know that they're fulfilled. And so the, those campus partnerships that the, the institutional investment has been such a wonderful experience. And it, that's what makes us so successful. We're speaking with coach Glenn Caston from Xavier, the gold winning the national championship in NAI, the cheer competition. And it's just his third season of competitive cheer. And by the way, coach Caston is the NAI national cheer coach of the year as well. Uh, we're here on the summit on Midwest sports net. And I encourage you, please like this video. We appreciate that and subscribe to the channel Midwest sports net. It helps us a lot. We've crossed the thousand subscriber mark, So we're pushing toward two now. And we would appreciate that if you take the time to subscribe coach, you know, uh, another thing about this, that is a first is the first time that an HBCU has won the national championship in this competition as well. And, and just from listening to you so far, I, I know that's a big deal too. Oh, it's huge. It's, it's, it's a huge mile marker for um, HBCUs across the country. Um, one of the things that I was very um, interested in after year one, um, I didn't see um, going into the NAI. I didn't see any HBCUs really. We, I, I don't, I can't recall any right who who were actively competing in the NAI. Um, and so um, after year one, I think we got some eyes. Right, everyone was like, wait, <laughs> <laughs> like. Because we, I mean, we we didn't do the best that we did. I mean, it was a year one, you know, uh, right. recruitment, didn't know the score sheet well, didn't know where to go to competition, things like that. We just had a lot of struggles. But um, ranked, I think we ranked number 21 in the country at the time um, after year one. So we knew for us to be ranked that high already, you know, we knew that we weren't starting from scratch. Mm -hmm. And so then year two, um, year two was more about, um, okay, what is the NAIA? Like, what is this? What? How does this work? Remember, we came from a club sport to a competitive sport. So yeah. we struggle from everything from eligibility to, I don't even know what the eligibility center is. So having to do that deep dig. <laughs> uh, cheer is not regulated like other sports, especially even at D1 institutions with the NCAA, that, that there's no regulation in that way, right? Um, and so... Um, while I'm a seasoned cheer coach, I wasn't seasoned um, in the NAI protocols and processes. So that was a learning thing. Um, and so year two was more about like, okay, so we, we're stopped treading the waters. Okay. <laughs> we know what we're doing. Go into year two, be successful. Well, we, we got, we advanced to nationals. We won the Southeast Regional Championship um, mm -hmm. in year two. Um, and so, and we finished fifth at nationals, right? Uh, which that wasn't even the goal. The goal year one was, can we just go to regionals and score in the top three, you know? So we superseded those goals. So that's, that's exciting. Well, then last year, I, I will say, um, well, this past year, um, our goal wasn't to win nationals, right? We thought um, we just wanted, what we wanted was, we wanted to be in the top three uh, across the country uh, because we knew that, um, that's a good place for us to be. Like if we move from fifth to third, like that would be great. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and so somewhere down the line, um, that was the coach's vision. That was our coaching staff's, um, vision. Cause we are like, okay, we can get, 
we can get to the top three. You know, we can get to the top three, right? But then <laughs> um, the kids came in. Um, we had a hurricane. Hurricane Ida came, um, knocked us down, right? So um, we were supposed to start practice on September, I, I, whatever, the first week in September um, after Labor Day. And um, and we weren't on campus. We just, uh, I mean, we didn't get back to campus until October. So we were doing all of these calls. We were um, we were we would meet via Zoom um, to talk to the to the parents and the participants and the athletes and all of our staff um, to update people what was going on uh, um, on campus. Um, and we 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 got into this prayer because we we're deep in prayer and we started praying for things, right? Um, and one of the things because as you know in New Orleans we've had catastrophic storms here, you yeah. know, so Katrina um, was one of those things. And so I, what I noticed was a sense of anxiety, um, especially from our Louisiana and Texas parents, because they were reliving this, this, this very traumatic experience that they, you know, at this time, these are the students who actually were born during that time, you know, yeah. so um, um, where all of these families face such grief. And so we started praying and praying and praying. And what I, I got a vision and I was like, well, what is like we need to we need to set the cast, right? We need to cast and we need people to be uh, to feel that there's hope even when they can't return back to their homes right now because of either they don't know what's damaged, they don't have any of that information, you know. Um, and so I, I started to ask people, I said, so through great trauma comes great tenacity and great um, responsibility. What do you want to accomplish, right? And so I asked the parents, and they're like, well, we just, we want our kids to have a great experience at school. So then I asked the students, I said, um, cheerleaders, what do y'all want? And they said, we want to be national champions. And I said, on um, in September, I said, well, okay, that's great. Um, we're not together. We're going to be at least a month and a half behind every other program who started to train in September. Uh, what are you going to do right now? While you're away in different states, we were scattered across 25 different states at the moment. Wow. Uh, what are you going to do to start to reach toward being a national champion? And so these athletes, they would um, drive all across the country um, to meet each other. Um, and they would stay at each other's um, parents' homes and they would practice together. They would form stunt groups together. Who's close to me? Who's this? Who's that? You know, they would train together. They would get on Zooms um, and show people their tumbling. Um, they would work out via Zoom together. And at that point, what I recognized was that it wasn't about the top three. It was about how do I get them to reach their goal? Because they've done this without me having to mobilize them to be so committed to something uh, that in this very traumatic experience, while also, while also maintaining academic, right? The academic yeah. rigor, because school was still going on, although the storm had hit Zoom. Um, I mean, they were in Zoom classes during the day. They were, so that was important as well. So um, when you have a group of athletes who are so committed to, to the process, it makes it easy, right, to 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 now try to attain the, the highest market, right? Um, because you don't, as a coach, I'm not doing that for them. They're doing that. Right. Well, well Coach, I, you, you talked about academics, and you, you mentioned it more than once. I know that that is something that is big not only to the university, but to you as well. Tell us about the academic side of things. Uh, you hold more than one office, not just the cheer coach, but you're working with the academic sides and, and more. Yeah. So, I mean, the academic rigor of Xavier is just, I mean, it's, 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 it's up there, right? Um, they, we are very prestige university in the ways and in, in terms of our expectations for our academic side, right? So we um, have, of course, a lot of our students, um, about 65% of our athletes coming in this year will be on a um, pre-med track. So that so bio pre-med, chem pre-med. Um, and so uh, what I think about, when I think about Xavier's rigor in that regard, what I think about is that we're bringing, when, when these students walk onto One Drexel Drive, um, 
these professors and these folks are simulating what it means to be in medical school. Uh, so that same level of rigor, right, that you would expect at that level, that's what they're walking into. And so um, the while the academic side is super, super important, it takes a whole village, right, to be able to welcome all of these students from across the country and have them be successful. So um, for marketing, I mean, we have students doing business, we have students doing um, pharmacy, we have a lot of students, we have students who are now doing our PA program, right? Um, our physician assistant program, we have um, from uh, doing Spanish minors, English, you know, so there are all these different um, avenues, right? Like I have one of my students who um, finished in accounting, who's now going to work at uh, Saks, Saks Fifth Avenue doing all their accounting books. I said, listen, don't forget the small people, okay? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so these students are really, um, they they are really, really being the leaders, right? We have folks who do our pre-law program who then go on to be um, politicians or community leaders or council members or mayors. and I mean, people doing public policy work. Uh, the, our students are on the brink of it. Um, one of our... Um, cheerleaders, Ya, um, who's um, one of our captains. Um, currently, she's working with Gilead Sciences in San Francisco for an internship working in their public affairs, um, dealing with sourcing grants and um, development work um, and getting things out to the community so that community has resources, right, around health equity. So our students are doing so many great things. Um, and as I mentioned and alluded to just a second ago, um, it takes the village, right? Because with, uh, while having those rigorous programs where now our students are now going to be the next leaders in their communities and the next medical professionals and et cetera, um, student affairs, the division of student affairs is super important because we have to get them mentally prepared for that, right? Um, they need wraparound services. We need to, we provide the experiential learning um, side of what they do in their academic coursework, right? So we have students going into community uh, into communities actually um, working alongside doctors um, yeah. so that and they're getting the field experiences. Um, we have students who are going to talk about diabetes, right, in, uh, in a Girttown community. We have students who are going to COVID testing um, and learning how to do that. Um, so these things are uh, these things are super important. We have students who are meeting the need in food insecurity and housing insecurity. Um, this year, our Division of Student Affairs in the Office of Inclusion and Social Justice, we took about 19 students to New York um, on an alternative spring break to learn about um, the American dream. And is mm -hmm. the American dream really attainable for everyone? And so they did that deep exploration um, on nonprofit organizations and marginalized communities um, to make that connection on what are the gaps, right, across our country that exist um, and what, in terms of resources and allocation and marginalization and diversity and equity work. And that work is super, super important. Um, and it's super, super important um, that that experiential side is mirroring, right, um, the academic side, because then they bring those things together mm -hmm. um, so that now it's real world application that now that they can apply throughout their communities and to make right the world a more just and humane place, which is the mission of our, or, um, our organization. Um, and it flows. Right. Um, I always say that you can look at a good team um, and a good organization is if the mission of the institution flows right throughout, right? Mm -hmm. Almost like the blood in our veins, right? It's, it floods and you feel that. Um, and certainly, um, as you can you can tell now, uh, Xavier Cheer, right? The mission of creating a more just and humane society, we've obtained that mission as well. We, we, we've taken on that charge and the values of our institution around equity, diversity, and justice, inclusion, right? We've taken on all of these things um, in our program model, because that's what they're seeing in everything that they do. Well, coach, obviously you have a lot on your plate. So <laughs> I will ask you then as uh, having a national championship in your, under your belt and uh, you're heading into the next year, you had a number of, of uh, seniors and fifth year students, six of them on this last roster. You have a lot of youth coming up though. So coach, <laughs> how, do, how do you follow a year like this past year. I mean, we've taken us through it now and, and we've seen some of the highs and lows. Uh, it obviously ended on a high note then with the national championship. What do you do now? Where do you go from here? Oh, geez. You know, 
<laughs> I get this question a lot, you know, but I, what I will say is that um, without revealing um, sort of our master planning, because we've No, no, in- no, don't give away any state secrets. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> we've been we certainly the coaching staff we over the summer we start to master the plan right um from looking at each individual athlete um to creating prescriptions for each individual athlete um not just athletically though like academically socially um we notice things about our students like this was like we last, yesterday we went an hour over one of our students who are introvert and we talked about um how that how that challenges that person in in their different spaces, right? Um, and so what can we do as a coaching staff to then now support that student uh, as they matriculate through Xavier so mm-hmm. that not that we're trying to change their tra- change them from being an introvert, but they get their needs met because then they're able to communicate um, when there's issues. And so those things, um, I think those things, the things that have made us successful this year is keeping on those same values um, of, how we view our program. Um, we don't, I'm very, very hard on our staff. So uh, <laughs> you're getting the, uh, you're getting this side of it. And what I mean hard, not harsh, um, hard meaning that we look at every single athlete as an individual. Yeah. Um, and so if you look um, on this wall, kind of here, you'll see the magnets of every single athlete um, on the wall. Um, because I believe in saying your name. Um, I believe in, in seeing your name. Mm-hmm. And so I keep their names plastered on the wall behind me because your name is important. And mm-hmm. I have to see you as an individual and not as a number, right? Um, and so that's one of the values um, that that we have instilled at Xavier Cheer. In fact, um, we, end, um, we end our week with a uh, West African saying, said, Habise. Um, Hibise simply means um, I see you and I acknowledge you for all of the gifts that you bring. And so we tell this to our athletes. They, they can probably recite it every, if you ask them to. Um, and so because we see you as an individual. Yeah. Uh, and even when we have to make tough, tough um, personnel um, choices, um, because we all get there as coaches um, in terms of having to let someone go. Maybe they're not eligible. Maybe they're not bringing their full selves to the process. And, and, and that's a, that's a question, you know, on whether or not um, this is the right space for you. We still support them um, in transition. So we, um, I'm remembering, not going to mention her name, a lay, a young lady who, um, who had to come down on her. She, she, you know, college was really hard for her. She, um, her transition here was really rough. Um, I think that she was coming with a different focus. Um, and expectations of what college was. Um, and so I actually told her, I sat down with her and, be, and because I treat these kids like they're mine, you know, um, and I said, hey, I got to let you go. <laughs> I really have to uh, tell you that you're not a part of this anymore because of these things. Uh, we've had these conversations in the past. Um, so you, it doesn't come as a surprise to you. Uh, but I want to support your development. Mm-hmm. And in me supporting your development, I want to check in with you um, every every couple of weeks. I want to know what your academic progress is. Whether you stay at Xavier or you go to another institution, I want to hear about your experiences. Um, I want to know if you've learned, um, if you've learned some things, right, from this, right? Uh, and so now we're taking her back. So she had a year off um, to deep dive, reflect. Um, she's she her eligibility status has changed so now she'll be eligible she went to summer school winter semester um her gpa is where it needs to be and so now she's walking back to us um and she what she told me is she, she said coach thank you for never giving up on me yeah um and so what our athletes feel is this love so when i think about our trajectory for the future um i'm thinking about how do we, one, um, start to create um, a program where other coaches can use this as a model because I don't want to be selfish, uh, because I want to make sure that, like, uh, all of our students across the country are being served uh, in the same ways, right, with love and compassion and dignity and empathy. Uh, so those, those, those things exist. Um, and so 
part of the what I've moved to now is um, I'm going to now be the second vice president on the executive committee uh, for the for the for, for cheer for NAIA. And what I'm hoping is that I can work with um, coaches um, across the country so that they too can now start to replicate uh, replicate success successful program models. Right. Um, and what we're lucky I'm lucky to serve on the committee with a lot of great pro um, a lot of great coaches who build great programs. Um, who now I think we can all. Uh, not that that work wasn't happening before, because it certainly was, but now we have more reach, right? Because um, because we know what it means, right? And we, we're, we're, we're institutionalizing uh, what it means to be and to invest in um, competitive cheer. Uh, in terms of our program growth um, right now, we accepted 10 new students coming in for the fall. Um, those three, we lost three seniors who were on the mat. If um, if that makes sense. So when you look at my roster, um, Xavier Cheer has fifty five cheerleaders actually. So we only could put twenty um, right. out there. So we there, there's a get uh, there, there, there's other responsibilities right that that everyone does. So what we're doing is growing our program so that um, so that now we can we can have more reach um, in different areas of cheer. Well, coach. Obviously, a, a program that is growing, and and you you just are picturing and and giving us a picture of something that's being grown the right way. So I appreciate that, and I Thanks. really appreciate your time again, Coach Glenn Caston, the NAI National Cheer Coach of the Year. The gold coming off a national championship this season, and definitely looking ahead to the future with a lot in store. Coach, thank you so much for taking time yeah, with us today sure. here on the summit. I, I really appreciate that, and success to you and to your team. And I have to tell you, we we uh, we make trips to New Orleans every now and again. Uh, the next time I go, I have one Drexel Drive imprinted in my head, so yes. I want to make sure that I stop <laughs> by and get a chance to say hi. Absolutely. Listen, if you come on a Friday, you can enjoy our catfish and gumbo right here. So, uh, and the next time you're here, let, let's let's go for dinner or something. Uh, I have all the good spots. Oh, I Listen, I'll take you up on that. I will take you up on that. Coach Glenn Claston with the Xavier Gold. Thank you very much for watching today. God bless you all. Have a great day. Thank you.